Hi everyone, my name is Lee Sankey and this is another video about the diatonic blues harmonica and today this is another video in my critical bending exercises series, the second one in fact, or maybe the third. <clears throat> but anyway, today I'm going to run through an exercise which I use quite regularly to work on my bends in the low register, in particular draw three and draw two. But I wanted to illustrate a few things um, using Qatar today, just about bending in general. So I'm going to just do that briefly before I get on to showing you the exercise. Now, bending on the harmonica is one of the hardest aspects of playing this particular instrument. And if we think about draw three and draw two, what we have there is the ability to change the pitch of the reed <clears throat> up and down. And this presents a challenge for a lot of people because that pitch vari variation is a kind of abstract idea. So un unlike a lot of instruments, such as the guitar, um, piano, saxophone, within that pitch range, there are specific notes that we can hit. On other instruments, you would press a key or you would hit a fret on the guitar keyboard or you'd press a piano key on the keyboard and that would give you that note. <clears throat> but one of the challenges on the harmonica, and indeed, let's say the trumpet, and also the trombone, hitting notes is a more abstract uh, concept. So what we have to do as harmonica players, if we think about this draw three, we have a huge range of pitch that we can hit. So we need to have in our mind where the notes are, the specific notes in that pitch variation. That's what I wanted to use the guitar to illustrate. Now, the other thing to just quickly throw in here is that on a C harmonica, on that draw three, we have four uh, notes available. So we can move through four semitones. Now, those notes, depending on the key that you're in, do different things. Now, my music theory, uh, I don't know about you, is, uh, is okay, but even if you play by ear, learning and understanding certain things about playing um, the blues or roots or folks, especially jazz, is really, really important. And so understanding that those same notes when we bend on the draw three, through the four notes that we have available, but I'll come on to in a second. They do things, different things, depending on the key that you're in. So today, this exercise uh, is in cross position, and it will help your bending to use in any position. So when we're in cross position, the notes that we have available um, start with the draw three, with no bend. Now we then flatten that by a semitone and that takes us to the minor third. And then we flatten it again which takes us to the two. And then we can flatten it again which takes us to the flat two or the sharp one. So those are the four notes that we have available. Major third, minor third, two, flat two, and then it resolves to the, the one, which here is a G, which we hit on draw two. Now, those notes are always there on that hold, on this harmonica. But when we change key, for instance, we move to C, the same notes have a different role. So, that what is the major third, the draw three, no bend, in cross position, now is a different role if we're, say, playing in first position and we're in the key of C. So it's the same note, but its function has changed. So the uh, half step bend on the draw three, <clears throat> which when we're in cross position is the minor third, blue note, if we're in the key of C, now it is the seventh. So this is a thing to go away and sort of look into 
Um, you could do several videos about um, you know this aspect of playing the harmonica or any instrument. But the important thing to understand here, um, important thing to go away and, and look into, lots of music video theory videos on YouTube and books you can buy, etc., um, is that these four notes that you have available on draw three. <laughs> don't change but when we change key they do different things so today what I want to talk about is a particular exercise that I use quite a lot which essentially sounds like this so all I'm doing there is I'm going draw two draw three no step bend draw two then draw three, half step bend, then back to the two, then back to the three, whole step bend. So I'm just working the first three notes that I have available. And I'm returning to the root note, which is in this case, draw two, the G, to anchor um, the sound in the key so I can check my pitching relative to the root note. It's a good to, idea to do that down and up. Now, if you practice that, you're essentially going, which on a guitar fretboard or a, a saxophone or a, a piano keyboard has very specific keys buttons and fret positions that you need to do to hit those notes and it's the same on a harmonica however it's much more of an abstract concept so this is a great way of anchoring the sound and working towards changing that draw three hole and the pitch variation from an abstract just here's a bunch of a range of sound I can move through to something which is very definable and that's a very important point Crucial, in fact. Now we can take this exercise and approach it in a, a number of different ways. There's two very important things. So if we're going draw two and then doing no bend, the first bend, and then the full step bend, we can hit that all lip pursed, okay? So, and then uh, repeat it going upwards. But then we can also hit it three other ways. We can hit it by anchoring ourselves on the draw two, but tongue blocking the draw three notes. And again, this video series about bending is in support of my tongue blocking series. And we're now moving into the low register where bending is uh, critical. So we can draw two, lip pursed, anchor, and then all the bends on three, we hit lip pursed. again go at a pace which works for you. <clears throat> you can then hit it all tongue blocked so that's all tongue blocked and then you can do it on the other side of your mouth uh, other side of your tongue so you're tongue blocking on both sides and you can practice that although that is a much more advanced technique so essentially you've got lip pursed You've got anchoring, lip pursed, but then doing the tongue block bends. And then you've got all tongue blocked, which I suggest to practice on one side, your dominant side. We can then take the, uh, the other critical thing, sorry, to, to um, tell you is that to practice this on different keys, different harmonicas, because doing this exercise on a C harmonica is completely different to doing it, for instance, on an A harmonica. And if you only ever play one harmonica, you're really gonna get caught out by the different reed tensions and different characteristics individual reeds have if you only ever play one harmonica. So it's a very good idea if you're an intermediate player, you know, we all have our favorite harmonicas, etc. 
but you have to play, practice this on an F harp, a high registered type harp, an E harp perhaps, the middle range harmonicas, the C and the B, and then again lower down your A's and your G's and your low F's. Um, because they're all, they've all got very different characteristics. So that's very important. So you can take this exercise up again by doing, throwing in this variation where you start the bend, the next bend that you're going to play, from the position of the bend or note that you were just on. So it sounds like this. So I'm going draw two, draw three, back to the two, back to the three, and then I bend it half a step. Then I go to the two, and then I go back to the draw three half step bend, and then I bend it down half a step to the two, the second note in the scale, so the draw three whole step bend, and then I go back to the draw two, the G, and then I repeat that. And again, that's a, a really good exercise. Now, the reason why it's important to get these so you're actually hitting, you know, the major third, the minor third, and the two here in cross position is because riffs like, or lots of other sort of um, really cool licks requires hitting those bends accurately. So although this can seem laborious and uh, um, kind of unproductive, the control it will give you will allow you to play much better blues, much better folk, jazz, or pretty much any, any, any tune. And I'm gonna upload a video going through how we can use some of these notes more musically. But doing this exercise will make a big difference. Now, if you're doing it and you're sort of struggling to see the point of it or how it could ha uh, help you, Let's look at the draw three half step bend. So that minor third. So that's taking no bend and then half a step down. That minor note. And that's where a, a kind of you can dig into the blues. So what you can do here is you can go to the draw two, draw three, back to the two, and then you hit that draw three, and then back to the two, and then back to the draw three and work and hearing that pitch correctly. Because you're using the draw two, everything's anchored from the draw two. You can hear the pitch difference and you can feel that blue sound. So you're going. So when you're going through that exercise, if you want to kind of step back and bluesify it, I suppose, um, that's a great way of doing it and, and it will kind of reinforce while you're, why you're doing it, I suppose, if you're struggling in. So you're going your... And then... Play around but what you're doing is you're turning that draw three full range of pitch away from a kind of abstract pitch variation into specific positions now this exercise only works on the first three notes the draw three no bend draw three half step bend draw three whole step bend but those are the notes we use a lot in cross position and first position. And if you can get a good handle on those first three notes, then it's easy to drop in the first, fourth one later, which is used a lot in uh, third position, and that's the flat five uh, in terms of the notes of the scale. So I hope you found that useful. Remember to practice this on different key harps, as I've said, different diatonic harps and go at a pace that works for you. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload a video in my tongue blocking series which will show you how you can make some riffs and music from this exercise. The other thing I should mention quickly, actually, before I go, 
is this whole exercise can then be lifted and shifted onto draw one. So rather than anchoring yourself on the draw two, you anchor yourself on the draw one and do the bends on the draw two. So instead of going or we're going Okay, fantastic practice. And then you can see how. If you want to play riffs like that. How important it is to not just be randomly lowering and raising the note. You're hitting a specific note. And actually, where we want to get to, which is really hard on the harmonica, is not to think of bent notes as bends and is to think of them as notes and the fact that they're bent almost disappears into the background and, and it's not something we think about. The bend is a means to an end and we need to think of those bends as actual notes like you hit on a guitar fretboard or on a piano keyboard or on a saxophone etc. This exercise will really help you do that. Hope that's useful and I'll upload another video soon. Thank you very much for all the comments and interest. I really appreciate it. Thank you.